Hola, estudiantes. That is Spanish for hello, students. Most of you probably knew that. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be going over the Black Panther Project exemplar that I have provided for you. Just to refresh your memory, an exemplar is basically a worked example of something. Before I begin going through this exemplar, I have a couple items for you that I need to address. The first item I want to go over is the sheer amount of effort I put into this. I put a lot, I mean a lot, more effort into this than I had originally intended to. If you are intimidated by the contents of this exemplar and this video in any way, shape, or form, I want to be clear with you. Please don't be. I do not expect every student to turn in a project with this level of detail and effort. This was the first time I actually tried to create an exemplar for the BP project, and I went a little overboard. I'm a huge fan of superheroes, and I always have been, which is partially the inspiration for this project in the first place. It's my own creation. Every single Halloween growing up, I wanted to go as a superhero. When I was in kindergarten, I tried to wear um, my Spider-Man costume to school underneath my clothes, kind of like Peter Parker does and, you know, all that stuff. What I'm trying to explain here is that my hopes and dreams of becoming a superhero re-emerged here, and the result is that I took this very, very seriously. Okay. What I'm going to go over in this video is an overachieving and ambitious project. That's long story short. The purpose of the video and the exemplar itself is to help you understand how to do the project, not overwhelm you. Okay, now I can finally actually begin to show you what I've been babbling about. Now, I did not pick an African country. I picked an Asian country, West Asia or the Middle East to be specific, Israel. Now, I created a hero for Israel. That is my country. Israel's not in Africa. Yeah, you got that. You can't pick Israel for your project. Of course, that's kind of my theme on projects. I pick things you can't pick, so you can't just completely copy me. You have to pick from the list of African countries that I provided you. I really picked Israel because I felt like Israel was a perfect place for a superhero to exist. This is due to my first current event, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, speaks for itself, really. This has been an ongoing conflict conflict since the mid-20th century. That is basically 1950 is the mid-20th century, so around there. Okay, this has been going on for decades, before I was born, before you were born. Yeah, and the conflict is also the source of the following issues. You have terrorism, violence, and major religious tension. There would be more than five um, current events to go over. This is the source for almost all of them. A bonus to picking Israel as the country for the exemplar is, well, you're going to learn a little bit about West Asia, which is often referred to as the Middle East in US media. Okay, this exemplar is only going to cover the tip of the iceberg that is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What you need to know for the sake of this video is that many people from each group, the Israelis and Palestinians, they really, really, really don't like the other people from the group. A lot of them. Not everybody, but a lot of them. There is a lot of animosity or ill feelings towards one another. Many people have tried to establish peace in Israel and put an end to this conflict. Uh, nobody has been successful up to this point. They fight over their religious beliefs. They kill over these beliefs. It's just kind of the way it's been for a while now. Okay. There is a lot I'm not going to tell you about the conflict, just because I don't want to upload a video that is a minimum of two hours in length. I mean, this there's that much to talk about here. This is a project exemplar, not a documentary on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I'm going to move on now. 
Moving on to part two. I have selected the powers of being super rich and super intelligent. So the hero has a lot of money and a lot of intelligence. Okay, now I will rightfully be criticized for this choice along with the following choices I make for my hero example. I have told you that you cannot copy a superhero that already exists. I've basically copied Iron Man here, completely going against the directions that I gave you. Well, I do have some counter arguments for your valid point. I'll address them shortly because part three, they kind of come out as well. Now, moving on to part three, my superhero name is Janet Al Salam, and I might be mispronouncing that. Unless Google Translate is lying to me, that translates to bringer of peace in Arabic. I'll go into that in more depth shortly, but here you see that the superhero name is in a language of the people, of some people who live in Israel. Seems like a very logical choice. Janet use, utilizes two different Iron Man suits that I spent a lot of time that maybe shouldn't have been spent working on. Okay, I use the Iron Man creator here. Um, okay, the first one is blue and black while the other one, the second one is tan and black. I wanna stop here and explain why I decided to completely copy and paste the Iron Man concept here. I said I would talk about it earlier. I've gotten to the point where I'm going to talk about it. Okay, it's a long story. Just kidding. You already know the primary answer here. Um, Mr. Roth can't draw. He has no, and I mean no, artistic abilities whatsoever. Mr. Roth is absolutely dreadful or trash at drawing. And as a result, he had to fall back on an online suit creator. Hopefully, I will redeem myself, or he will redeem himself from talking third person. He will redeem himself later on in this project. Also, going back to the current issues with Israel, because that's where your hero needs to start. To combat the stuff that happens, like car bombings, militaristic threats, violence, Israel needs a hero who is both smart enough to create new tech to prevent these things from happening. Preventing is key because, I mean, sure, I could have created somebody that was super powerful and would never lose a fight, but with sneak attack bombings that really wouldn't accomplish the goal of preventing violence in this country. So the powers are really necessary. Uh, I'm not even a huge Iron Man fan, even after Endgame. He doesn't crack my top five favorite superhero list. This is the hero that the country needs. Somebody who can outsmart both groups and prevent violence from occurring. Now, I strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to try to create a fresh and original hero for your country that really reflects the culture of your country in a unique way. You can use the online programs if you want, but I really enjoy it when students think outside the box and design something completely original and unique. Mr. Roth would have gone this route, I would have gone this route if I had the artistic ability to do this. Self-deprecating humor aside, that means humor at the expense of myself. The Iron Man concept fits excellently. It's a, Israel is a developed nation, so there's enough natural resources to get by as well. And they, there's jobs. I mean, it's not like it's a third world country. Um, there's just violence and the powers of the suit really would make a big difference in a positive way. Here we go to the next point. Letter C, explain how your hero's costume enhances their superhero powers and or fighting abilities. Okay, my superhero has a suit that enables him to fly, shoot lasers to destroy RPGs and missiles, and other generic Iron Man powers. The suit can read heat signatures to determine the number of people in a building and where they are. In addition to this, excessive heart rates of people in the vicinity. So, you can detect if somebody's feeling nervous. The suit can also deploy tactical EMPs designed to take out terrorist tech. 
The suit picks up on bombs in a given area, an invaluable skill for preventing suicide bombings that do happen. Okay, moving on. Oh, here you actually, before I move on, here you get a glimpse at how Janet is going to operate. He is using his intelligence to create a suit that will effectively neutralize the violent tendencies of the country. Yep, already said that a few times. This video is going to go on for a long time. Okay, on to letter D. Explain how your superhero costume reflects your African country's culture. My superhero's name translates to bringer of peace in Arabic, the language spoken by the Palestinians in Israel. The name was chosen in spite of my hero's Israeli descent. He made this choice as a way to underscore his mission to repair the tension between each group free of bias. My hero also has two Iron Man suits, each of which reflect Israeli culture in the following ways. Remember, this is a really important part of this project, the culture. The color blue symbolizes peace, which reflects my hero's name, bringer of peace, and just his mission and the country's need for peace. The tan suit reflects the desert setting of Jerusalem, along with the color of buildings there. This is because Israel is known throughout the world for its desert setting. Buildings actually have to be that tan color. So there is your local identity type thing. Okay, that's a lot for one section, right? Well, not ready to move on, I'm trying to jump ahead. Well, the reason for a lot here is that this is really important. One of the four graded skills on this assignment is culture. This is the area where you get to demonstrate how and why your hero reflects the culture of your African country. The most obvious example of a superhero that reflects the culture of a country is Captain America. I said it a thousand times in the other videos up to this point. You know, the star, the colors of the flag, personality is representative of American values like freedom, right and wrong, stuff like that. Okay, you get it. Don't just copy and paste Captain America either. Be original. Create the perfect hero for your country. Part for your hero's base. Which city is your hero most likely going to protect? Jerusalem. It was clear. It's not the most populated city. It is populated. I mean, shoot, metro population, 1,253,900-ish. Um, population is certainly big enough to justify this city. However, this wasn't the main reason why I picked it. The city is one of the oldest in the world, over 5,000 years old. A wide range of people throughout the world are familiar with this city due to its religious significance. Jerusalem is divided into Israeli and Palestinian territories, making the city symbolic of the territorial disputes between the two groups. Yeah, what's right there. And, yeah, the, the symbolic nature of it, I had to do it. You know, there's territorial disputes and divides within the country and specifically within the city of Jerusalem. It's a perfect spot. Okay, you do not need an explanation that goes into that level of detail. However, I couldn't resist including it all because all that stuff is relevant. It's the perfect city for the superhero. It's just perfect. Yeah. Okay. I think I've said enough. Letter D, go on to Google Earth and take a picture of your city from a bird's eye view. Put that image in the space below. Here you see Jerusalem. You can see that Jerusalem is in the desert and how many countless buildings there are. Really gives you an idea of the infrastructure or the development or buildings or whatever, and the geography of the city. A lot of hills in Jerusalem, a lot of them. Okay, but that's your bird's eye view. Moving on, letter E. How is your hero going to travel at high speeds within your city to fight crime? Important section here. Seriously, one of those skills you need to demonstrate, you demonstrate it here. Okay, Janet is going to fly throughout Jerusalem's area, scanning the wall between Palestinian territory and Israel in particular. 
The suit enables him to fly, like, of course, Iron Man. Okay. Letter F. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself, you know, going back and forth between the notes and, uh, okay, let's get back here. Wait, no, here. This is probably the appropriate level of detail for this. This is not one of those times where I'm going just too far, too much. This is the appropriate level of detail since it's really important. Um, you might even need more than this. Janet has it easy. He can fly with the Iron Man suit. You might not have that power, so you'd have to get a little creative here. And yes, it is worth the time. This is an important part of the project. Okay. <clears throat> F. Where is your superhero base going to be? You just need a general description here. Since you need to provide context for your Google Earth image. Okay, I need to know if you have a specific zoomed in area. I need to know where that is. You can even put a locator map in, that'd be great. I maybe should have put one in here as well. I wrote that the base is located on a hill adjacent or next to the tallest building in the city. Really weird in Jerusalem. So they have this, they're like against building really tall buildings due to some of the religious history of the city. It's interesting to research. Um, yeah, I spent hours on this. Okay. Letter G, how will this location enable your hero to help people to the best of their ability? He can fly to the scene of any violence that goes on in the city, particularly terrorist threats. There is highly advanced tech in the hero's lab, and he uses it to keep watch over the city. That's probably appropriate. Didn't go too far overboard here. Letter H, I go overboard here. What are some special features of your base? The device that looks like a satellite is programmed to shoot a laser beam at incoming missiles and RPGs, so it's a missile defense system. Building is divided into three and a half sections, one dome for each section. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Section on the left is organized as a high security prison. The middle section is the base of operations that includes some scientists, labs, and simulation fields on the left. One third. This also happens to be the largest section of the building. Therefore, two thirds of the sector is a school that purposefully enrolls Palestinian and Israeli students at a 50 to 50 ratio, providing them with the highest level of education they can receive. And can you really stop for a minute and imagine going to school and having Tony Stark's? No, my hero isn't Tony Stark, but basically kind of is. Imagine having Tony Stark's resources in your classroom. I think you'd love going to school. The lab serves as a barrier between the school and the high security prison. You don't want the kids somehow wandering into the high security prison and ending up scarred for life. So I had to think about that. Section on the right is the business sector, which is the HQ of the hero's business. It serves primarily as an office building. The building is colored in such a way because this is a requirement for all buildings in Jerusalem. Our hero is conscious of regulations pertaining to infrastructure because got to follow the laws. Here is the building. Not perfect. But I am very proud of this. Um, I spent hours working on this image alone. Um, it's a combination of many images, uh, many different shapes and stuff. Um, don't roast me too badly, please. Again, you aren't required to spend this much time on your base. What I basically did is I took a street view image of Jerusalem and worked with the image in assembly. And yes, the building on the left right here, that is your uh, tallest building currently in Jerusalem until this wicked awesome base got built. Okay, yeah, okay, I used the app assembly to create this base. You can use shapes in your images. Um, if you're working on the iPad, you can download that app from self-service. Um, for me, since I basically copied and pasted the entire concept of Iron Man earlier, I really wanted to uh, contrast from Stark Tower as much as possible in my base design so I could be at least somewhat original. Um, 
Yeah, I wanted my hero to have a base that addresses many different issues within Israel as possible. And remember, the more thought, time, and energy spent on this, the better the grade. You do not have to use an app, guys. You can use paper to draw the base. You do need to have a Google Earth image. Could be Street View, could be from above, looking down. Um, and some places, some places don't have Street View, so that might not even be an option. You might have to use a Google Earth image. Um, Google Earth or Google Maps, you have to have something like that here. And it certainly would not hurt your grade. In fact, it would help it if you had a, you know, building shape relatively to scale because I feel like this is relatively to scale um, in your image. And that is part of the grade, the relatively to scale part. You can't just have like one shape to just boom. No. It has to be relatively to scale as best as possible. Okay. Moving on since this is already going on for a while. Part five, your hero's story. Before I read this out loud, I want to emphasize that the story justifies why my hero transformed from a greedy arms dealer to a hero committed to helping the country. I wrote this story without adhering to a five paragraph format. I apologize to English teachers everywhere. That was very bad of me. This is just a free write. So your ideas are important. I wanted to get mine across. This story has to represent the why and the how of your hero. Every great hero has a great origin story. It's just a fact of life. Be creative, keep your country's issues in mind, and write what you want. Keep it PG, please. There goes nothing. So he is rich, very rich. He is a major beneficiary of the economic surge of Israel. Looking at this now, I definitely need to revise a lot of this. Is he? Yep, yeah, he is. Okay. Just like Tony Stark. He is a weapons manufacturer. It's, a, it's just great that I'm doing this. Okay. He was extremely pro-Israel and saw Palestinians as unjust and evil in the wrong. He made the assumption that all Palestinians hated Israelites. He was able to make his millions selling arms to the Israeli army. Where have I heard that before? One day he was being transported in Jerusalem in his prototype bomb-proof limo. When his vehicle was rammed by a car strapped with explosives, car bombing, the front was impacted and didn't hold up. Our hero opened the door before passing out. While unconscious, he was dragged inside a Palestinian's house. I'm not going to continue to read all this. Long story short, an old woman, the mentor of my hero, changes the hero's worldview, makes the hero understand the potential he has and the reason why he should work towards peace. Okay, letter B. Write a summary paragraph that describes who your hero is, what they do, what their powers are, etc. Okay, this is probably an appropriate level of detail here. The hero uses the Iron Man suit to fly around the city of Jerusalem and prevent violence and brutality between Israeli and Palestinian groups. The suit's ability to pick up on bombs, missiles, and heat signatures combined with its ability to then dispose of these weapons by force makes violent action impractical or pointless since it yields no results. The hero also uses his position atop one of the most lucrative companies, so rich or wealthy, profitable, you get the idea, in the world to support peaceful resolutions at the political level. Moving on. Your final conclusion. Okay. You're going to explain your superhero, uh, how your superhero is going to use all of their resources, powers, base, kashmir, to solve 
the real problems and fight crime within their major city or country. You can read the rest. A couple things here. Stick to your country's issues and feel free to get creative when picking a method of writing this, whatever you may think of. My approach here was to provide a summary of what the hero's mission is, what they, what he stands for, and how he's going to accomplish his lofty goals. Because superheroes accomplish goals that are some maybe beyond a lot of regular people. Okay, here we go. The hero's ideology stems back to the woman that rescued him from Hamas, but it's also realistic. He understands that negotiation alone will not, whoops, will not allow the two sides to settle their differences. He dons the Iron Man suit to put an end to militaristic action, preventing terrorist attacks and stuff like that. Flying around the city of Jerusalem and preventing acts of violence and terror is a necessity in the near future, despite his work to come to peaceful resolutions. He works to put terrorist leaders in jail and hold brutal Israeli leaders accountable in a variety of ways. He is willing to leave the city of Jerusalem in his fight against this religious tension and does so frequently in response to crimes. As a philanthropist, my hero supports infrastructure, politicians, jobs, and businesses that will bring Israel and Palestine together in Jerusalem. Man, this is a lot. He will create festivals that celebrate the history of Jerusalem and the two religions coming together. He's a public fi uh, figure who will lead by example in this way, and he will dare to speak out in support of Palestinians in spite of being an Israelite. He will also support the future of Israel by providing integrated education designed to break down barriers between the two religions. He will focus his philanthropy on building infrastructure in Jerusalem. That is a big key word. I'm going to talk about that in a second. In summary, the hero will use his intelligence and wealth to usher in peace to Jerusalem and Israel as a whole. His wealth and influence will allow him to unite politicians and leaders alike to achieve peace with, while he will put on the Iron Man suit to forcefully put a stop to violence. He is going to have to use every single one of his attributes to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Time will tell if he's up for it. Okay. Philanthropy is a big word. Um, if your hero has money, they should be a philanthropist. Or what it what a philanthropist is, is somebody who gives generous donations of money for good causes. So Janet is really trying to help in any way that he possibly can, not just superhero stuff. It's a key word. You can only do that if you're rich. You've got to work within your powers. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's, that's all for... That's it. That's the video. That was nothing. I knew going into this that the video would not be short. I really tried to set the bar high on this exemplar and hopefully I didn't overwhelm any students that work on this project. I really hope that this helps some of you when you're working on the Black Panther project. I basically tried to recreate my classroom instruction in each of these videos, um, but I know I forgot stuff. There's just it's not perfect. It's not the same as being in a classroom, giving instruction to you guys and having you ask questions where you're confused about stuff. Um, I tried to think of everything, which is why there's probably hours of video content on this project alone. I'm not perfect, but I really tried as best as I could to help you during the uh, pandemic. Creating the, uh, these videos is my way of bringing my incredible wisdom and teaching prowess to you. I want to thank those of you that have stuck with me in this process and are following the flipped classroom instruction videos. You are the ones who make all the time and preparation I put towards making these videos worthwhile and I appreciate you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me anything pertaining to this project. Drop a like, subscribe to my channel. Mr. Roth, out.